Greetings, Nephilim. This is Craddock, and I'm gonna try and hold my excitement, but it could be happening. <laughs> Support for multi-element and hybrid builds in Diablo 3. This video, we're gonna discuss multi-element and hybrid builds and what changes could happen to allow them to function and compete in our beloved game. Uh, potentially. The potential upcoming addition to our arsenal is a power on the PTR for the Stone of Jordan. Uh, the Stone of Jordan, added power. Each of your elementals damage bonus is equal to your highest static elemental bonus to skill. So what I take this to mean is that if you have a maximum element of cold at 40% plus 30 from hitting 10 enemies with absolute zero black hole, uh, your other skills uh, on the class, in the very least, for a wizard that would be fire, lightning, and arcane, would be brought up to that maximum value of, at that moment in time, 70% elemental damage bonus. So, this is how it works. Now, what I'm really wondering is if uh, off-class elements such as physical from pain enhancer or, you know, holy from mirror and I would still be boosted, but I guess we'll find out on the PTR. So the situation, the bind that we are in, is currently in Diablo 3, most builds, uh, multi-element builds and hybrid builds are almost always going to be less desirable than single element or single skill builds. This is because you have specific affixes on gear that are dedicated towards specific skills. You have elements on gear that are tailored towards specific elements, and you also have a limited number of skill slots plus items that have specific modifiers to specific skills on gear, those things are very hard to avoid, as you can imagine. So most builds are single element, single skill builds. Uh, the cool thing about this bonus is that it enables us, us to avoid one of those things, which is the element bind. Like, uh, you would always be coming in at a detriment when you add in a new skill because you wouldn't benefit from the elemental damage. So if you have 60% elemental on damage on gear, that's a lot of damage that you're not getting for your alternate skill or your alternate element, uh, depending on you're running multi-element or hybrid build, right? So maybe this will shake things up, change things. Definitions. First off, multi-element is a build that uses two different elements. For example, there can be builds that are multi-element but not hybrid. One example is Veer Chentoto, which uses the multi-element of uh, fire and lightning. And then you could also have hybrid builds, which use two skills or one skill and one item power, such as Manalt Heal, that would split your damage types between different things, right? Uh, split fairly evenly, usually, in a hybrid build is the intent between these two things. Uh, there can be hybrid builds that aren't multi-element, so single-element hybrid builds. For example, you could be using Mammoth Hydra and Meteor Shower. Those are both fire skills, but you're using two of them and trying to combine two different uh, damage uh, sources, right? So while I'm really excited for this new legendary power, I just can't see how it's going to be used in the current state of the game. Uh, Multi-element is going to be needing more support uh, via other means, like just adding it on to Stone of Jordan, which doesn't otherwise have any other meaningful affix, is probably not enough. And if you think about it, this affix alone doesn't really add anything for the majority of builds that would include it. That's because all of these builds are, as aforementioned, single element and single skill builds. So they're not going to benefit from something that gives you bonuses to your other elements, really. This is to support multi-element builds and support, uh, inherently, hybrid builds as well. But they don't really have a place yet. This is like the first step that's been um, asserted, right? So <laughs> what we're doing here is we're going to examine some pain points and perhaps some areas that we could perhaps easily change things. Uh, but what I want you to realize right now is that there is no way that this is going to be able to just come into the game and instantly work. 
there are going to have to be multiple changes, not just this one, to probably truly support multi-element and hybrid builds. Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at the wizard, for example. Uh, as long as Deathwish and Edge Sigil are more competitive than other options, the wizard will want to run this weapon and source combination pretty much almost all the time when you're looking at just looking at the raw damage alone. It's a little over a 10 times multiplier, 10.625, when you combine uh, Deathwish and its sigil. Uh, putting together some napkin math for Convention of Elements and Stone of Jordan together, and at an increase of 100% elements even, like that's optimistic, that's very optimistic. You would get double COE duration technically, but you would only be getting benefiting from the increase of half of the elements. So it's it's really that that's kind of a wash in my mind and in increase wise. So really what you're getting is basically a three times two multiplier and that gives you a six times multi total. So you're comparing something that's six times as strong versus something that's ten times multiplier. It's not even in the same league. Uh Death Witch and Edge Digital will still be the clear choice uh, even if you're going for a hybrid build. And the hybrid build obviously still has to fit in those extra weapons, those extra affixes, those extra skill slots given up. All every, it's, it's, a, it's a big chunk of sacrifice right now that has to go in to make it happen. So uh, when we're going through here, we're going to examine some things that perhaps could alleviate that. But taking a look, other... Uh, so these are weapons at Shigil and... Death Wish. We also have quicker clearing non arc and speeds requiring Aetherwalker or Ingeom. We have major uh, relevant skills that have damage m multipliers on weapons, so weapon slots are very in demand. These include like the Wand of Woe, the Twisted Sword, you've got Grand Vizier, you've got Unstable Scepter, uh, Serpent Sparker, all these weapons, right? And therefore, what this means is the wizard cannot hybrid skills really effectively in the current state of the game without at least four weapon slots, which don't exist. We have a maximum of three right now. So we have the Death Wish at Sigil, at Sigil, and then you would have, for a hybrid build, you would have skill one and skill two, the weapons that correspond with those skills, right? So uh, another point here is that Stone of Jordan uh, is an item that is not used or hasn't been used in many other build combination. It takes up a jewelry slot, it takes up a ring slot, which is very valuable for a lot of different builds. Um, I'm going to circle back to this, but the sum of it was I think this is too much of a hit for multi-element and hybrid builds to have to, on top of everything I ju just mentioned, also give up a ring slot to just to be able to run their build in comparison to something that's single element. Uh, single skill, right? Uh, many builds also have overlapping separate multiplier item slots with set item slots. So this might require the use of a Rourke, other ring slots taken up. You might have defensive rings or utility rings such as Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac. So these ring slots are very in demand and would hinder the creation of hybrids. Uh, so when we look at the wizard specifically, Another thing you would think is maybe we could hybridize Minolt Heal, a Minolt Heal based build with some other skill, which would be like super cool, right? You've always dreamed of it. Well, I've got to remind you that Minolt Heal proc damage still isn't increased by your elemental percent damage on gear, so <laughs> this would need to be fixed before we would be able to hybridize with Minolt Heal or, you know, run multi element builds with Minolt Heal, so <laughs> it's kind of like a almost everything you can think of, there's no way in at this point in the game. So, all right, so let's take a look at the our goals with these suggestions, like what do we want to achieve? And we're looking for allowing multi-element and hybrid style builds to be flexible, easy to fit in items for, and competitive with single element, single skill builds, uh, with as little change required in the game as possible, because we want to make it as easy to make this happen in this later state of Diablo 3 as possible, right? So we're going to make suggestions that fit this theme. Uh, let's take a quick look at the things that we possibly can't change because they're just so prevalent throughout the entirety of D3. Uh, legendary powers that are assigned to multipliers for specific skills. This is unfortunately something that we just might not be able to deal with. Uh, it's something that multi-element and hybrid builds will just uh, sort of have to 
fit in uh, on their own terms, right? Uh, items requiring affixes for specific skills, such as the helm and boots and the shoulder piece and chest, perhaps this is something that you'll just have to find the best combination that you can, given what you have available. Uh, not really easy to change those things as either. However, we can change not having enough space in the build. Looking at items to see where we can combine things to make it easier for hybrid and multi-element builds to thrive is definitely somewhere where, where we can take a look. Uh, freeing up the skills, perhaps even. We could take a look there as well. So let's examine some of those things. So one of the first things I thought of when I read this patch note on Stone of Jordan was, oh my goodness, this will be so good when you combine it with Convention of Elements. And that's right, it's it, they're made together. They're like peas in a pod. They're, you know, they're, <laughs> they're meant to be. Uh, and to some degree, when you, you, you think of it, they should be together. And I got to thinking, like, why are these actually separated? They, they should just be combined. This bonus that has been proposed for Stone of Jordan should not go on Stone of Jordan. It should 100% be included on the Convention of Elements, especially because, especially because right now, if you're using a single element, single skill build, it's not really going to benefit from the secondary effect all that much. There are like a very limited number of builds that are going to actually benefit from stacking this on the convention of elements. So why not just do that and free up that item slot and make it so much easier to combine different utility rings and different defensive rings and actually make builds function for multi-element and hybrid, right? So. That was my thought, that just the biggest idea, just nix the idea of putting this on the Stone of Jordan. I know it's an open ring without something on it, but just lose that idea right now. Convention of Elements is already in the game. It's already multi-element sort of themed. It has multipliers for all the elements they run in, uh, on, on a set uh, cycle, right? So. Uh, perhaps adding this on to the con Convention of Elements is the better way to go about this. In the very least, the Convention of Elements is always going to be desirable for a multi-element and most hybrid builds, right? And you can always configure this secondary, this new portion of the legendary power that would be tacked on in such a way that it would give very little benefit to single element, single skill builds. And to those who would argue that this would be too strong, multi-element would be the only thing players would opt for, I'd say no, you still have those restrictions I mentioned before where hi hybrid and multi-element styles already require additional items, additional skills, additional affixes to configure, so no, I just can't see that happening right now, even if we're to loosen up a little bit in this way, right? This change would make multi-element and hybrid builds competitive with single element, single skill builds, and that's what makes it so darn good. So in the forums, I've seen suggestions of, well, why don't we just double or triple this uh, maximum elemental percent damage bonus? That would be so much better for our single element, single skill builds. And I'm thinking, no, that's just a power increase. We don't want to allow that for these single element type builds, these single skill builds. We want to be boosting the damage of only the, the hybrid, only the multi-element builds. It's very difficult to do, as it turns out. Uh, one of the original ideas uh, that I had was to increase the damage with sort of a reverse nares idea, where the more uh, different runes that you had that were of different elements on your bar, um, these could even be specific to active elements that would be generators or spenders, perhaps. But the more of those that you had on the, your bar, you get an increasing multiplier to your maximum elemental percentage. And that idea, it just, it, for the same reason, it falls flat. It would also increase uh, the damage of single elements, single skill builds. But I did come up with an idea that I think fits uh, this qualification. How about this? Killing enemies with more than one element within X number of seconds enables a multiplier for your maximum elemental percent, and that lasts some duration of time, some number of seconds, right? So for example, if you're using a multi-shot build, 
that has the fire rune killing most of your enemies, but you're using a physical rune for your generator that sometimes on rare off chance will kill an enemy, you would in that off chance get this bonus even for a single skill build, but it would be very rare and far between and you would just have, uh, it, it would favor the multi-element uh, hybrid builds so much more often that it would be worth going after, in my opinion. The killing enemies is critical here because it, it uh, while you would have some issues on the Rift Guardian for the multi-element build because your damage would decrease, you wouldn't be killing enemies, You would this buff would drop off. I think for the majority of the time during the Rift, it would be a cool thing to have. The only question, of course, is that is killing enemies being with a certain element already being tracked in the game? And the answer to that is possibly no. So if that's the case, then this would be hard to put in. But if it already is, then uh, why not use that? And I'm moving on to another suggestion. This one's really cool, but might involve a little bit more work on the development side of things. So with our new power, uh, you may now select a second rune of one skill and assign each of these runes of said skill to your skill bar on different skill slots. This would allow the player to then use whatever element of the skill that they want in whatever moment, moment of combat that they want. And they would only have to gear for that single skill. So this would support multi-element single skill builds and just... Uh, this combination is just very hard to find. It's just very, very hard to find. A multi-element veer is the example that comes c comes to mind in initially for that. It's just not very prevalent in the game. And to put something in the game that could allow that uh, would be super exciting. And this doesn't have to be a power specific to you know what we're talking about with Stone of Jordan conventional elements, uh, but. Uh, it could be something later on even that gets introduced to support that style of build. And moving right along, let's focus in now on some more wizard specific enhancements. So coming back to Deathwish and Edge Sigil, these weapons are sort of similar in that they're very alike, right? They both boost damage. Uh, Edge Sigil is the more significant of the powers because it actually allows you to cast your uh, spinders that are on your bar automatically, right? So if you're looking at Deathwish and you're looking at, at, at Sigil and wondering which one is redundant, I would say Deathwish is more redundant and it should absolutely be the power on Deathwish should be just straight removed from the game. It's taking up space uh, that would free up so much capability for the wizard to actually just slot different items and different legendary powers and enable us to fit more hybrid builds uh, in, you know, more more skills together, right? Uh, so I, I would say nix the death wish power altogether, maybe keep the item open for transmog or whatever, but get rid of it. And then for the edge sigil right now, it's kind of specific to certain boosting certain skills. It's not boosting all damage like death wish did. So my suggestion is make the Multiplier on Etch Sigil, similar to how Deathwish used to be, where it was boosting all damage. This would allow the Etch Sigil to boost damage of items such as Minaltiel, for example. And then you could tune the Multiplier on Etch Sigil to whatever you like. It would function well. It'd be a single item. You could balance it. It, it would just be, you know, rock star, right, in, in that condition, because it's not taking up additional space, but also really cool when you put it into the mix and allow channeling skills to still possibly thrive too. Anyways, that's all I have in the terms of major suggestions for the game in its current state, especially for Wizard, since I'm most interested in Wizard. But I will follow up uh, on testing from the PTR related to this item. I'm really interested to see where this power that is currently uh, affixed to, or uh, this Stone of Jordan, I'm very interested to see where this turns up, but I'm very hopeful that these suggestions uh, make their way to whoever needs to hear them, right? And uh, additionally, we're going to keep an eye out on the PTR for uh, Archon interactions because I know Maximum Element doesn't really work that well with Archon and how Archon determines Veer and Veer and uh, Chetoto in particular, how they interact. So we'll take a look at that. Um, we'll recommend some fixes based on things that 
might help out. For example, one big one would just be to allow Monaltiel proc damage to scale with lightning elemental damage percent increase, right? That would be a huge one for multi, huge win for multi element and hybrid builds, right? Anyways, uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you for listening. This has been a much longer video, but I hope these ideas have given you a lot to think about and consider and hopefully allow you to present your own ideas based on uh, what could potentially become from this new world that would be created in support of multi-element and hybrid. Uh, very cool to see even something remotely uh, like this presented in, in a patch for Diablo. So that's why I'm excited, not necessarily of what is in the game now, but what what it could mean for the future, right?